Hi, I'm back. And I have something awesome to show you. In my first video, I've shown this quick tool change, which you can add to your printer for adding different kinds of tools, hot ends, laser cutters. This was based on uh, an old camera tripod. This is a similar system. Well, this idea, this tripod, was the base of this swappable hot end. I encountered a problem with the tripod because I have multiple tripods. This is a, a newer one, it's a bit bigger. The problem I have with all these tripods is that they have different systems. So I have made a base. This is exactly the same uh, dimensions as this uh, original quick tool change. I have screwed it onto this plate and on this plate as well, which fits this, uh, this tripod. And I've made several blocks, well, tool holders, which I can screw at the, at the bottom of the camera. And now I have one system for all the cameras and um, all my tripods. One system for all tripods and all my cameras. That's pretty neat. But <laughs> it happens to be that I have a foldable printer. And a cool thing is that if I fold it down, like this, then I have already added the quick tool change to here. So, and if I remove this tool, I should have waited for this until the end of this whole video series about this printer. <laughs> Going to all the trouble of making it foldable just to find out that I have made a camera slider which is able to 3D print. <laughs> As I've mentioned in my previous video, I'm going to do some cable management and not the standard type of cable management you would expect. Someone has sent me some, uh, some stuff and I'm very f thankful to him. Kenny Eaton has sent me uh, some parts and among them this uh, stepper motor, a pancake stepper. Uh, another thing he sent was this Ivern Tech linear rail. So it's like he knew that I'm going to put a big heavy camera on my x-axis. He sent me this control board of big 3-tech and of course it came with the duck. The problem I'm having right now is that I cannot fold it while all connectors are on there. So the goal is to make this foldable mechanism work with the cable management. And I have a great idea for this. Uh, I really do not like how this is connected. How this sort of strain relief should work for this bed. It's uh, soldered directly on this and this piece of loose plastic with this loose tie wrap yeah should be able to uh, yeah relieve some strain but um, I'm a bit skeptical so I have an awesome idea how I'm going to improve this something I've shown not in the previous video but in the video before that one with the custom connector and I have some power connections. So I'm going to use these power connectors and I'm going to make a custom connector which I can use to connect and disconnect the whole bed. So I will start making a custom connector design and now that we are talking about the custom connector <laughs> I've learned a lot from you because I received a lot of messages with suggestions of which tool I should use for making a proper uh, crimp connector. But I have bought a set, uh, all in German. Hmm. It comes with different uh, pliers. This one is for the, the sub connector, but I have also one for these uh, insulated terminals. And someone has mentioned that the way I have crimped the insulated terminal in my power supply is not the proper way to do it. 
and I couldn't agree more. I should be able to make a, a reliable connection in a proper way without uh, breaking all the <laughs> loose terminals. But I have all the parts. I have the, um, the big 3-tech control board, the crimp tool, this duck, my camera slider so I can start designing. I have designed my own cable chain because I couldn't find one which or fitted or had yeah was drawn properly. So I've designed my own and another advantage of designing my own link is that I can use this link to embed it in the other parts I have to design including the connector. So if you look at this assembly I've made this link oh it folds this way. So and I have already printed one out of PETG and it looks pretty cool but the drawback of PETG you can hear this this squeaking sound so I have printed one out of uh, PLA with carbon fibers in it I have these power connections and um, yeah, I went uh, for a search on uh, 3D Content Central and I decided that I'm not going to make the same mistake twice like I've done with uh, my previous video about my custom connector. I still have that special connector which I have um, already demolished to find out how these small terminals uh, work. This is different than uh, how it's drawn. I'm going to measure this and measure this connector and draw this and embed this into my uh, my cable chain link. So I will have one link with the, uh, oh that will, this is going to look great. <laughs> I really cannot wait. This is one of the sickest looking connectors I have ever seen. <laughs> this is even better than, than I initially thought when I came up with this idea. I'm going to remove the bed, disconnect the cable of the bed. Then I'm going to solder these power connectors to it. Crimp <laughs> the, the crimp terminals for the, um, the temperature uh, measurement and then uh, yeah, hopefully the crimping goes uh, right this time with my new tool. The female connector, it fits this connector. It's going to be placed like this. Nice. Okay, now I can drill the holes in this plate and add the cable chain. I think we can agree that this is looking awesome. I have to remove this magnetic layer and uh, I can just add this on here. And if I move it all the way back, then I can fasten these screw locks. And now I do have some proper strain relief, but I have to lengthen these cables. So I have some floppy drive 
flat cable. Alright, I have lengthened all these cables, this Z motor and end stop, extruder motor and X motor and end stop and this hot end wire, hot end kit. Yeah, I've made a complete mess, so let me just uh, clean this up real quick and then uh, continue on uh, adding the drag chain to the sprinter. Nice. This is a better position. And I have designed this awesome part. I can add this to here. It should just fit. And there's one link going from here to there and one from here to my custom cap, which is printed at this very moment. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. It was pretty hard to uh, to feed this wire all the way through. Everything is nice and tight. And if I fold this, then this chain will just... Funny thing is that this was more work than the actual folding mechanism. Yes, of course, this custom connector, which I can uh, connect and disconnect like this. I think this is some, uh, some next level cable management. Please let me know what you think. I still have to connect everything to that main board. Let's see if this thing will turn on or if it catches fire. And I'm honestly a bit afraid because I just have added a new main board, extended all these cables, and I haven't tested it. Oh, here we go. Hmm. I think it will work better if the other end of that power cable is also connected into the power inlet. Oh man. Okay. Take two. Here we go. It shows temperatures on both the bed and the hot end. All right. Now let's home everything. And the only thing you hear is that is the fan. Oh, one thing I forget. I still have to heat up the bed and see if that works. Yeah, I will test that. And in the meantime, if you have enjoyed watching, then uh, please hit that like button. And yeah, I'm still not finished at all with this printer. And I assure you that you're not going to guess what I'm going to do in my next video. If you want to see that next video and you haven't subscribed already, then please consider doing so. I will uh, see you in the next video. Bye. Okay, let's heat up the bed and see if that will work with that custom connector. Uh, temperature, bed, and let's heat it up to, well, let's say 60 degrees. And it's heating. <laughs> awesome. It looks like my custom connector. Yep, it's getting warm. 
<laughs> nice.